everyone, thanks for joining me today. In today's video, we are going to make this easy ear warmer slash headband. This is a fast project and makes a great gift for this time of year or any time of year, frankly. So grab your materials. I have everything listed in the description box below on what you'll need and let's jump right in. We're using a 24 peg loom and I'm using number five bulky yarn. This yarn is from Hobby Lobby and I will list the exact yarn and color down below. So we're going to make a slip knot and attach it to the first peg. And for this project, we're going to use 12 pegs. So I, I went ahead and placed a stitch marker on my 12 peg to remind me not to go any further. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make a little E around each peg as our cast on. So we're gonna start with the first peg, wrap it around, and take the bottom over the top. Now we're gonna do the second peg, so wrap it around once, and then wrap it around again on top of the first stitch, and then take the bottom over the top. So again, we're just gonna do one peg at a time, making a little E and then another one on top and then taking the bottom stitch over the top stitch, and we're going to do this for the first 12 pegs. We're only going to be working with 12 pegs. I like this cast on because it's a little bit tighter to me, in my opinion, than the E-Wrap cast on. It just, it works well for me for what I'm trying to do here, so that is why I chose this cast on. Um, if you have another cast on that you like better, feel free to do that as well. It's nothing that you have to do. So again, if you have a better cast on or one that you like more, go ahead and do that. So now you can see my stitch marker is here. So this is my 12th peg. So I'm just going to take that over the top stitch. Now we're going to start the purl stitch. So I'm going to actually first skip this first peg. I'm going to skip it or slip it, you may hear that. So we're gonna do the purl stitch now. So purl stitch is taking the working yarn below the stitch on the peg and then taking that stitch up, making a loop, taking it off the peg and replacing that loop back on the peg and pulling it tight. So I'm making the loop, taking it off of the peg, replacing it onto the peg, and pulling it tight. So I'm just gonna move these stitches up a little so you can see it a little bit better in case you've never done the purl stitch before. When I first started doing the purl stitch, it really scared me, but don't let it scare you, just take your time and it's really simple once you get used to the idea and uh, it goes fast. Okay, so we are moving right along doing our purl stitch and we're going to do it almost to the end. Now at the last peg going this way, we're not going to do the purl stitch. Instead of doing the purl stitch, we're going to knit that last peg. So I will show you what I mean. So here, now this is our last purl stitch. So go ahead and make that purl stitch, pull it off, replace it and pull it. And now this last stitch, we're just gonna knit. So take your working yarn and take it around and make a little E and then knit that over. Now we're going to do the E-wrap stitch. So do the E-wrap stitch the whole way down, all the way, and then once you get there, secure your yarn and take the bottom over the top. So we're taking the bottom stitch over the top, and this is the E-wrap stitch. So continue doing that, So we're working our way down. Okay. 
Now we're going to again do a row of the purl stitch. So that's the same process. There's the loop nice and bright there. So go ahead and work your way down doing the purl stitch and I will show you what to do next. Now I am putting this in a little bit of a fast forward mode just to move things along a little quicker. So if you need to, feel free to pause, rewind, or whatever you need to do to help yourself out. I am going to show you a little shortcut that some people like to do better. So I will show you that now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to e-wrap down again. So I'm going to just start with that second peg because remember we ended it with a knit with our purl row and e-wrap my way down. And again, I'm just gonna show you a little shortcut. So go ahead and secure the yarn. So we're gonna knit over the first stitch, okay? Now, the second stitch we're going to knit over, then we're going to do our purl stitch. So pull that loop up. So you're getting two things done at once, which I really like to do. And as long as you can keep track of what you're doing, it really works out well. So I'm knitting over and then I'm doing my purl stitch. So I'm doing it all at once. And again, this is just a little shortcut that may save you some time while you're doing this. I really, really like this method. Now, if you don't like this shortcut, that's okay too. You don't have to do it. I'm just showing you because I find that it really does save some time. So I'm just gonna work my way down and continue doing the knit and the purl all in one. So I'm doing this all while on one peg, getting my knit and my purl stitch out of the way. So I'm just going to go back to the normal e-wrapping and uh, purl stitch. So I'm gonna uh, wrap this, knit that peg off, and then just continue with the e-wrap to move along with the video. And I will show you the next step after I have done this row. So keep knitting. Now I made my headband 17 inches. Now it depends on who you're making it for. You may not need that much or I, I don't know if you may need more. I don't know. It depends on who you're making it for. But I've knitted mine to 17 inches. So this is how it looks. I think it looks really pretty. I really love this color of red. And again, I will list what it is in the box, in the description box below. But now it's time to cast off. So make sure you have a darning needle handy and make sure that you thread it. And we're gonna leave a long tail. So, um, and this is what we're going to thread our darning needle with. So go ahead and cut that yarn and then you will need to thread the needle, which I've already done for time purposes. And then we're just going to start with the second peg and work our way down. Now, in the video, keep in mind the tail is rather large. Um, so it, you know, you have to watch when you put it through that it doesn't get tangled because you want it to be smooth. So just gently pull it through. You don't have to, you know, pull it through hard or, or fast or anything. Just slowly go through. There's no rush. And it's normal, you know, to get, you know, little tangles like this just just be patient and work your way through it and it'll come out nice and neat just like that 
So work your way down each of the pegs and I will show you what to do next. So I'm at the end almost. Still just tugging along, but like I said, there is a reason why this tail is so long, and that's so we can sew at the end. So now we're going to go and do it the other way. So go ahead and do your last peg, work your way down, and arrange your little peg so it doesn't get tangled. Okay, so we're at the end. So now we're going to go the other way. So again, I'm just taking my needle and placing it down, just attaching it. I don't want to attach it too tight. Um, and again, if you have a way that you like to do this better, go ahead. But I just think this is really simple, especially for beginners and what we're doing. And it seems to work out well. So, but you always have the choice to do what you feel is best. If you're experienced and, you know, have another way of doing things. Keep going. And again, I may fast the video up a little bit for time purposes. But um, I think you get the idea. Just go down each peg. These make great gifts. So, and you can work them up really fast depending on your distractions. Now, at my house, we have a lot of distractions, and the best time for me to knit is at night when my kiddos are in bed. But usually by that time, I'm exhausted. But when I'm motivated, I get it done. But when is your favorite time to knit? When do you like to knit? What do you do when you knit? What do you drink? Do you drink coffee, hot chocolate, tea, Diet Coke? I'd love to know. All right, let me fix that. Now we are done. So I'm actually going to knot this last one so it's secure and doesn't come out because we don't want it to come out. So go ahead and make a loopy knot with your yarn, pull it through and tighten it up. Just like that. So make sure it's secure. You can tug on it if you need to, or whatever you want to do. Don't tug on it too tight though. Just make sure it's secure in place. And now we're going to take the headband off of the loom or the ear warmer, whatever you want to call it. Just take it off each peg. Just take it off the loom with your loom tool or your loom hook, whatever you like to call it. Going down the row here. And then I will show you the next step. So see, we still have the long tail. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We are going to lay this flat. So and we're going to fold it in half. So lay it flat and fold it in half. And then we're going to take the sides just like that. Then fold those in half on both sides. And we're just going to place them inside of each other. So just like they belong. So just like a little Pac-Man. And then we're going to take our darning needle with our long tail and go through slowly. Make sure you're getting all of the layers 
through your darning needle. I suggest using metal darning needles. I know I'm using a plastic one. It's because I don't have my metal one in my room and I just wanted to continue and move along. So I actually like the metal darning needles a lot better for some reason. But again, like I say on everything, you can, everyone has their opinion, so. But just go through each stitch one at a time and work your way down and up. You don't have to rush. Again, make sure you get all the layers. So make sure that's all getting through your darning needle. And believe it or not, this is going to work out flat. Once you get done sewing it, it's going to be flat. And it's going to look really cute when you're done. So just make sure it's all even, which it will be. But make sure it matches up. And just pull it slowly making sure you're getting it all. And we are almost done here. You can find darning needles at your local craft stores. Uh, Michael's, Jillian's, Walmart even has darning needles. And they also come in a lot of loom knit kits. So if you got a kit, you'll usually get a plastic darning needle. Whoops, stuck to my loom there. You'll usually get a plastic darning needle in some of those kits. So you can use that. So now I'm just going to knot it and pull it tight. Make sure it's secure. And see, everything looks secure and in place. So I am just going to give that a cut. Not too close. Okay. Then we're going to just take the ear warmer and place it on the opposite side. So now the pretty, the pretty side, the right side is showing. And as you can see, it has a cute little twist in the front. And you are all done with your project, ready to keep yourself or somebody else's head warm in this cold, cold weather. So that's going to do it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos and ideas like this. I really thank you for watching and for your support. And I will see you at the next video.